For Afghan women, the fall of the Taliban brought historic change. I want to be a good doctor in the future. More than two million girls are now in school. Some women are able to work, even in the most public of jobs. While others can now enjoy the simple pleasures they were denied. In the cities, a growing number of women cover only their heads, instead of their whole bodies. All of this would have been unthinkable under the Taliban. Women couldn't come out of their houses, couldn't move around uh, freely and alone. Dr. Masuda Jalal was jailed by the Taliban for her work helping women and children. She remembers their cruelty, seen by the world in this video of a woman being publicly executed during the height of Taliban power. After their defeat, Dr. Jalal became a symbol of how much had changed for Afghan women. In 2004, she was the first woman to run for president, finishing well ahead of most male candidates. She was appointed Minister of Women's Affairs, then removed, she says, for pushing too aggressively for women's rights. We have provisions protecting women's rights and promoting women's rights within the constitution, but it's not translated in action. Female prisoners like these in Kabul today seem to have no rights at all. Kamela is just 29 years old. All it took to put her behind bars for three years was her husband's word. He accused her of stealing from him. After I was imprisoned, he got married to another woman, she says. I think he wanted to get married, so he put me here. Even more disturbing, violent attacks against women and girls continue today. Here, Atifa Bibi lies in a hospital, her face badly burned. She and a friend were victims of an acid attack late last year as they walked to school. This is Atifa today. Her wounds have healed, but she no longer goes to school. She told us she has nightmares almost every night. It cannot go away. Every minute it is with me, she said. Rates of violence against Afghan women are among the highest in the world. So is the maternal mortality rate. Three years ago, we traveled to the remote province of Badakhshan because it has the highest maternal mortality rate ever recorded. That remains true today. Six and a half thousand deaths per 100,000 births, compared to just 13 deaths per 100,000 in the U.S. This is the female inpatient room. Yes, yeah. The medical staff told us most of the women here are forbidden by their husbands from coming to this clinic or from seeing male doctors. Some die, she said. They're not allowed to come even to get simple medicine and treatment. In spite of these barriers, there has been progress. The number of Afghan women with access to newly built clinics like this has risen in recent years. But so has the influence of the Taliban. As the fight for control of this country intensifies, the small, fragile gains achieved by women and their most basic human rights are threatened. Lara Logan, CBS News, Washington.